Max, good to see you. <laughs> good to see Thanks you. Thanks for coming Kyle. back. Thanks for uh, coming back on short notice. Well, <laughs> my amaze the thing that amazes me is that you actually had me back again. Evidently, I must still have something interesting to say. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you do. You, you, you always you, have something interesting. You know, but usually by now, everyone's like, ah, shit, I'm tired of listening to this guy. <laughs> I'm sure people get tired of listening to me, too, and I'm on every friggin' show. So. Yeah, yeah, but you've always got someone else with you, you know. Ah, it's all in fun and games. You know, the fun thing is it's like, you know, we've got we've got a big, long history together, so we'll always have something to sit here and shoot the shit with. Well, yeah. You know, so that's the fun part about it is, is you can come back and we can mm-hmm. bullshit about anything and, and – people will still enjoy it because it's you or it's me or it's a combination of us both, you know? Well, I mean, you know, like you said, we've got the history, but both of us grew up as farm boys. Um, d- granted, different levels and everything, but just grew up kind of doing the same thing. It's just we never knew each other until, what, the last 10, 15 years is probably about? 2006. Yeah, so <laughs> 10, 15, I wasn't too far <laughs> off. So... <laughs> but going closer to twenty max yeah. than fifteen. Uh, well, but hey, not not a bad guess for this old guy to not, <laughs> right off the top of the head. You nailed it. You, you know, you know, well, twenty eight years. This last December, that's how long I've been up at the dealership. Jeez, where'd time go, huh? <laughs> hey, I'm still sitting there trying to figure it out. <laughs> well, the good thing, you know, is is yeah, you've been through you know several different ownerships, but you've stayed consistently with the same job. So right. for for a guy in your in your career path, you've got to learn these products pretty damn well. Yeah, you, you get to where you know a lot of the tricks, the little little things that commonly go wrong with stuff. And um, the fun part is, is just, you know, there's always a learning curve. And as I get older, as the machines get older, everything else, you start finding Newer problems that are rising. Or the opposite way of that, right? You get new products that come on. You go, oh, come on. You changed mm-hmm. that. It worked so well. <laughs> Man down. Hey, believe it or not, they were saying that that's been an issue with PBR lately. Has it really? Yeah. They were actually, on a Facebook thing on for one of the PBR Facebook pages, some guy put on there, he goes, every time I open a PBR out of my fridge, it foams up. I'll have to ask my boss. He's a PBR fanatic. That's all he drinks. You know, (laughs) I I was thinking it was because they were getting a little bit of age on them or whatever in my fridge, but, you know, usually stuff doesn't last that long in my fridge that it goes Um, Those were um, off the shelf this afternoon. Yeah, it says January 15th to 24. So you're good. When they were bottled, so shit. But anyway, (laughs) what I I was getting at was is is, uh, uh, when new products come out, Mm -hmm. Then you can look at stuff and be like, oh, why did you change that? Because it works so good with the old one. Why did you change it to the new design or whatever design that it is? Right. Well, and and the big thing is there is, you know, (laughs) they they go and change something. You got, and this is another life lesson. This is how we always end up talking about this, but another life lesson. You got to accept change. Change is inevitable. Right. But I'm, I'm. I'm the one of them that, no, I've got it figured out. <laughs> Don't change it now. I know Leave what I'm doing. Leave it the hell alone. Yeah, come on. You had a good product. It was real good. You add a little more electronics to it, whatever, but don't change the heart of it because, you know, <laughs> it makes my job a lot easier when you got the same thing and it's repetitive, well, repetitive. Yeah, but that's that's kind of what I was getting at is, you know, you've got 28 years of experience. So you've seen the garden tractors and the lawnmowers and everything change the last 28 years, you think about the first one you ever worked on, you go, God, it's complicated as an 18 or a 19 year old. Uh-huh. And now you look at it and go, wow, that's actually pretty simple. Well, <laughs> yeah, well for, I remember one of the first models I ever worked on was a John Deere model 425. That's a big garden tractor. It you're, is. You're 18, 19 years old and you're going, oh man, oh, I'd kill to have one of these. They were 10 grand back then. Oh, I'll never be able to afford anything like that. I think I've owned one now for four or five years. I bought one for the farm. <laughs> I bought it for 1200 bucks. But the thing is, that's one of those models that I have worked on so many of them that I know. You can fix anything on that and, and not and like the back of your hand. Yeah, as soon as, well, my dad was using it quite a bit. And I told him, I go, hey, these have a tendency, the plastic cam gears go in. I was just going to say, that's the cam shaft, right? And I got it cheap enough because the cam hadn't been done in it. And it had right around a thousand hours, which is that's it. You, you get to it, be about it, that time. It, it's gonna go. Well, I went through when I bought it. I kept it up there at the shop, at the dealership, and I 
weekends, a couple hours after work, I'd sit there, go through. I did everything I could to prevent it from happening. <laughs> and I'm like, brought it down the farm, give it to my dad, go, here, go ahead. Should be good to go. He ran it six months, and he calls me one afternoon, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He goes, yeah, lawnmower died. And he goes, I think it's a camshaft. I go, it can't be the camshaft. I did everything. I go, I adjusted the valves. I've gone through, check this, that. I mean, everything. Should... And Dad goes, no, I'm pretty sure. I go, Dad, what do you know? You don't work on these things like I do. I get down there. I hit the key. And, of course, when that happens, I've seen enough of the failures that it sounds like a sewing machine. If you've ever heard just the needle on a sewing machine, well, I hit the key and I go, yep, dad, go get the strap and four wheel <laughs> pull it in. <laughs> but I mean, it's an eight hour job according to deer book time. Yeah. You can do it a lot faster than that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's with a hoist and everything up at work. I can do it a lot faster. We had it up there in the shop and I looked at dad. I go, okay, I need this, this, and this. What are you going to do? I go, well, I'm going to open it up and have it gutted here so I can see you. I go, I'll have all the parts tomorrow. I go, tomorrow night after work, I'll have you back mowing. <laughs> he goes, you'll have me back mowing tomorrow night. I go, yeah, before the sun goes down, you'll be mowing with it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat there for an hour and a half, pulled it apart. Of course, I wasn't on my hoist where everything's this height, but I told Dad exactly. He goes, so you need this, this, and this. He went and grabbed tools out of my toolbox, come over. He goes, man, this is just amazing watching you do this. He goes, how many times have you done this? I go, <sighs> There ain't enough numbers in the world. <laughs> I'm sitting there. Uh, I go, let's just say if you count all the digits and then you use your feet, yet you still ain't got Long enough. Way to go. I go, it's probably yeah. that many in a year back then. Yeah, I remember just keeping shit. We'd keep three, four camshafts on the shelf at one mm-hmm. point uh, up there, along with all the parts to go with it, the tappets, the push rods, and, and everything well, else to oh, go with back, it. And back in the day, I mean, early 2000s, it was nothing. Probably knocked three or four of them out in a week. I mean, it just it, it just happened. But that beyond, out there. beyond that, there were great tractors. I mean. Well, they're still using the same transmissions in the ones now. Are they really? The 724 that you had? I would say 95% of that's still no the same kidding. transmission. It's in that 425. Did from, not know that. And the 425 come out in 92, 93. Oh, that earlier than that. Well, it would have been right after the 318s. The last 318s were built in 92. 420s would have been 92, so the 425 yeah. replaced the 93, 420. 90, 93, 94. And that was when they went from the... Uh, uh, um, see, this is part of getting old. You start... Ah, everybody loses their mind on try, some stuff. I'm trying to remember the name of the what brand transmissions were in the 420s, and they went from that to the Kanzaki, which is, that's what's in the uh, in the 400 series, and then the X4 and 5, which then they added the four-wheel drive and all the other all-wheel stuff. All-wheel steer. But and even like stuff. right now, an X739, current model. Absolutely. It's still the same basic transmission. Yeah, they, I'm sure they've they, changed it just a little bit, but the, overall. The biggest thing the was is the modulation on the PTO clutches. They've got that where it's a little smoother than what it used to be with the 425s. Like tomorrow morning, we're going to be getting some snow here. If you were out going to blow snow with a 425 back in 92, 93, 94, you wanted that thing good and warmed up and ready to go because <laughs> when you pulled that PTO on, you'd be sitting there feathering the choke trying to keep it going. And now they've got to where it just kind of yeah. feathers Goes and it brings it in slower. Yep. And it's just, it once again, the improvements they make over technology. Mm-hmm. Technology yeah, is just with okay. That. Yeah, we found out we just need to tighten that orifice a little bit, let that oil in there a little bit slower, and that'll be a lot easier on the engines. Even frame wise, it's they they've gotten a little bit lighter on the frame, but it's almost the same frame when you start looking at it. Motor mounts are a little different, but yeah, I mean, basically, it's the same kind of size of a tractor, mm-hmm. and and they've just changed some things around that right good bad otherwise well, well and a lot more technology a lot more wiring i mean x700 series lawnmowers plug one of them laptops in and do diagnostics for sensors and um there's actually it's crazy isn't it oh I, I always said that the day i gotta plug a laptop into a lawnmower is a day i'm gonna retire <laughs> you're not there yet max <laughs> um i've been plugging in laptops for lawnmowers <laughs> let's see almost eight years so. yeah you're not there yet no no, I'm, yeah, it's just funny that technology nowadays it re- it really involves a computer. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's on lawnmowers, ag equipment, trucks, cars, minivans, airplanes. You got to plug a computer in to help you diagnose what the hell's wrong with the thing. <laughs> and of course, I'm one of them. I'm an old school mechanic. It's like, you know what? Give me something mechanical. Give me a carburetor. All that magic stuff that goes on in those fuel injection systems and that. <laughs> give me a carburetor. Give me something <laughs> I can figure out. And I, I'm good. And uh, honestly, I've. I've, I'm starting to embrace the technology a little bit just because you can look up a code and it will steer you in closer, the direction. Closer to the direction you need to go or, besides. But the big thing is, is you got to do the experience end of it. You got to have enough experience to know reading those codes and everything, what to look for, what symptoms are present and everything else. That's the learning curve for the new technology. Right. Yeah. And that's being an old school guy and, of course, this all started with the whole change thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm a tough one to change. A lot of people are. And uh, I hate embracing new stuff. It's like, you know, I, I, I liked it the way it was. Just leave it. Leave it. Don't. It was a great tractor the way it mm-hmm. is. But now you see some of the improvements that they made, uh, and you go, well, that's a good idea. That's well, a good idea. Then you, or you go, really? <laughs> well, in the same thing in life, you know. You, the big thing is, and... You're one of them that has taught me this over the years. You're and, welcome. And you're a lot younger than I am, but you, <laughs> you've taught me certain things in my life. And uh, it's, you know what, just when you think you're getting comfortable and you think you got it all hammered down, something's going to happen that changes what you got to do. Yeah, I think my one of my favorite sayings in the entire world is, tell God your plan and watch him laugh. That That's exactly what I was headed towards. I just couldn't get the words <laughs> together on it. Because it's so funny. I mean, you can tell God exactly mm-hmm. what you're going to do and what you were born to do, and he's going to throw you a curveball. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you learn to swing and hit the curveball, you miss the curveball, you tip it, foul it, ball, whatever. But Oh, and believe me, one of them was here coming up this spring. be three years ago I lost my dad. You know, yeah. me and my dad, we were like tight. Oh, I oh, know. I wouldn't know half the stuff I know if it wasn't for my dad. But I still remember going in and visiting him when he was in the hospital, and he didn't have long. And uh, I still remember looking at him going, Dad, I go, I don't need you right now. Uh, I go, I need you. But I go, right now, I go, you've been training me for 43 years to do this stuff. I go, I've got it handled. You just get yourself better because I go, I need you in June and July to run the cultivator because <laughs> I go, it's always too hot and I hate being out there cultivating corn. I love cultivating corn, but it's always so blasted hot. Especially in June, July. It's, mm-hmm. it seem, especially lately, it seems like the summers are getting hotter and the winters are getting a little chillier. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're going to get our cold weather here by the weekend, but by the time this comes out, it's going to be damn cold oh, out. Yeah, yeah. But uh, how, do, how was your harvest? How'd it go? Um, surprisingly well. Because actually, before I came tonight, I'm like, I need to re-listen to that last uh, last time I was here. Just to, what did I tell him? What what were we looking for this fall, and what was going to be going on? And I had pretty much at that point, I said I'd just gotten done cultivating the corn, pretty much all of it through the first time, and it was poor germination. Corn was short. Yeah, I remember and, you're like, I should just well, turn it all over mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, we, we, we ought to just go out there with a disc and start scratching and maybe we'll have something better. I remember that conversation. Um, well, of course, from there, the ragweed took over. Um, ended up another person to come out and has sat here at the table. Um, had Cody Purdom come out and uh, give me a hand and did some spraying. And I'll tell you what. Me and my dad were never ones for spraying 2,4-D roundup on the beans, 2,4-D if some broadleaf and that. And uh, all of a sudden, I call Cody, and I go, hey, I go, I got giant ragweed. I got foxtail. I go, I give a shit less about the foxtail. <laughs> Excuse me. Let let that go. I go, I can deal with that. But I'm tired of this giant ragweed. I go, when you're out there combine, it's, I'm in a, I, believe it or not, self-propelled combine, nowhere near as tall as what, Modern stuff is, but when you got ragweed that's beating on the freaking cab of the, <laughs> and it's not fun. Well, uh, he come through and I, 99.9% of the ragweed, he smoked four, it. Three, four foot tall. Wow. Just gone. Done. He used some good stuff then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, and it, it really wasn't that bad price wise. I'm sitting there going, 
<laughs> this is an every year thing now. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking we're going to start <laughs> using these modern chemicals. I can change if it helps me out. <laughs> and uh, I got into one field, and I'm sitting there, and I, and we'll go back to how everything started, but just corn. I went in there. We were talking about the red clay hills and how dry they can be and everything. And a drought year, a red clay hill will help you if you get the corn to germinate. Well, guess what? It helped me. I got out there, and I even had my eyes open. And I'm, I've been around that dirt all my life. Where there was no corn when I was here six months ago, there was corn. And I got into it, and I'm like, <laughs> was it tall? No. It was four foot tall. Don't have to be tall. But, but it had ears on it. And I had some ragweed and had to deal with it. Otherwise, I'm like, huh. <laughs> Evidently, we got the rain at the right time. That clay holds moisture. Everything. It was a perfect storm. Now, the other field I got into. <laughs> Not good. No, huh? no. It, it was rather ugly. I barely, well, and it was probably about a quarter acre. I barely got enough corn off of that to cover the auger at the bottom <laughs> of the combine in the grain tank. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. I, if, they, if the ragweed was in there, I think it would have yielded better than the corn did that, <laughs> in that section. Well, the, the, the one thing that I'm waiting for is for one of these technology companies for seed to come out with corn that only gets about four foot tall or five foot tall and puts all the nutrients into that cob. Right. You know, cause now it, it's putting it into these stalks that are, you know, eight, 10, 12 feet tall. It's taking up a lot of nutrients to, to, to grow that corn, that kernel. But, but I think the problem is that you got to have that much, Leaf surface. I would disagree. In order to absorb the sunlight to produce the corn. I would disagree. Okay. And the reason I'll disagree is look at soybeans. Now you're talking apples to oranges. Right. But soybeans only get two, two and a half, three feet tall. They 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 cover enough to 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 Block put cover up. over the mm-hmm. ground to keep the weeds from coming in, but yet they bring enough nutrients to produce how many pods. Well, yeah, and I guess I could see that. Yes. Genetically, if you get the corn that short and get it to leaf as thick as beans do. Or 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 wider. It would look more like a pineapple plant, though, at that point. That'd be cool, though. <laughs> yeah. This summer, a lot of corn did look like a pineapple. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is I've been hearing some yields around the area, and it seems like, it seems like guys did all right. I um, mean, overall. I'll tell you what. For me, it was better than expected. And I think that was the concern. That was everybody. That was everybody. I mean, like I said, I was ready to write it off. I was ready. I know. I'm not even going to try and get the combine started. I'm, I'm going to go out there. I, I, I mean, I was at the point. I'm like, I can't. There's no, no one around that fills silo anymore. I got my neighbor <laughs> next door that I get my beef from and everything. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I have him just come in with his haybine. There's foxtail and the corn. There might be some little, look like the little uh, Chinese food corn, some niblets in there or whatever. <laughs> I have him come in and mow it, bale it, put it in a bag and feed it to him as silage or whatever. Call it a day. <laughs> but um, I was actually well surprised. Of course, just like anything, there's always a struggle. Oh, yeah. It's either at the beginning or the end. So now this is where I'll back up. <laughs> we go, go to get the combine ready to go. No, it's been two years since the combine ran. Because I had an issue with it, and I'm just like, you know, I, I don't need it. I had beans last year. That's a different combine. That's the pull behind. Yep. So I'm like, oh, of course, it was always me and Dad worked on the stuff. So I could have a guy in the cab, and I could sit back and work on the engine, or vice versa, Dad would be yep. back there checking stuff out. Either way. I can't be in two places at the same time. So I bring my wife into it. <laughs> Which, great. You know what? She wants to come down and help. She she awesome. sees what I'm doing. Absolutely. Even though it's just a hobby for me, she wants to support my hobby. So she comes down, she gives me a hand. Well, I go through, I'm like, oh, I got spark. This thing's cranking, cranking, cranking. And I'm like, nah, well, evidently I'm not getting fuel. Well, we always had to sit there, and it's got a mechanical pump on that old engine on there. And I'm sitting there, I'm pumping, pumping, pumping. It's a gas motor. I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting any, so I loosen up the line at the carburetor. Nothing. Loosen up the line. Start looking around, and I'm like, yeah, pump's bad. And it's a mechanical pump, runs off the camshaft. Yeah, right on the side of the engine. Right. 
Well, this has got a kind of like a forty twenty. Exactly, like a forty twenty diesel. 30, or whatever. Yeah, thirty twenty. Well, if anyone that's familiar with those, they know how they work and everything. But your towers are across from each other. You got to line in, line out. Yep. Well, this one here, same thing, but it's indexed differently with the towers. Oh, so like a. Uh, oh, so if you're looking down at the top of it, you got the two. Would be like this on a forty twenty. This one here. Is so they're cockeyed up. 45 degrees or whatever. Yep. Yeah, I remember those pumps. Well, there's one that goes this way and one that goes this way. Okay. And these are steel lines going to it. So it's not like. I was bending them. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? It come close to that. But I'm like, you know, ah, it, it should, somewhere, someone uses that pump and that thing. <laughs> not anymore. I went through finally, dear, no back and forth. I've called a guy I know. I'm like, maybe he's got something sitting around new old stock. There's certain guys. New old stock. Goes and buys out dealerships and stuff like that. So, nope, nothing. So I keep digging, digging. And you get in. <laughs> after and I'm sure you're, you're talking that it's probably not August when this is happening, correct? Well, well this, believe it or not, I actually, for once, was a little bit ahead of the really? eight ball. It was like September. I still okay. had some time. Yet. You had a little time then. So I, I I, I I don't procrastinate right till when the corn's at. <laughs> I I just 19. know how some guys are. Right. Well, and us smaller guys typically, yes, we would sit there and wait till the last minute. I'm one of them. I, I like being a little bit proactive. Now, I mean, I could have been doing that when I planted the corn, just making sure everything was good to go. But I know how my luck goes. Mm, I go and get there. it running then. By the time I need it, it's it, done. Yeah, exactly. It, I got to start over. Well, make a long story short, I end up going through, and finally, I'm like, ah. O'Reilly's, if you use the deer number, it also crosses over to the same pump that goes on a 4320 Gen 1 tractor, or new generation tractor. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the compact tractors, 4320. No, no, no. Actual 4320, 4020 with a turbo. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, okay. So I go to the parts manager. I go, hey, order me one of these. <laughs> Looks up. Nope, can't get it. I go, Really? I go, 4320, you can't get the fuel pump for it, the mechanical, the transfer pump. Nope, can't get it. I go, That's weird. I go, okay, let's try A&I. Nope. So I'm like, okay, well, finally I take that number, go on to O'Reilly, go digging around. Yep, they can get it. I get the pump, hold it up to the other one. The arm's not the same length. That goes into the That goes in into the cam? The cam. <laughs> so... Long story short, I'm finally, I'm fed up. I'm like, you know what? I threw the old pump back on the thing, and I go, you know what? I'm not going to cut the fittings off the end of the steel lines, but I go, you know what? I'm going to wire up an electric fuel pump. Now, mind you, I already went through, put a new key switch in this combine <laughs> about a month earlier. Okay. And I'm sitting there going, so what's a keyed hot? It's a gas combine. And I get uh oh. Wire it up to the coil. Okay. Uh-oh. Wire it up to the coil. Turn the key on. Yeah. I can hear that pump running back there. All right. Start her up. Starts up, runs. Go to let the clutch out, pull it out of the shot, out of the shed and let it run a little bit. I could catch it with the choke once and nothing. This is just weird. And I mean, I'm this far from pulling the carburetor off going, well, it's been sitting for two years. I got shit floating around in there. All of a sudden I go, wait a minute. I just hooked up to an ignition system. I'm drawing whatever little bit of amperage. So my $40 electric fuel, electric pump. fuel pump that I put on there, I'm like, eh, okay. No, well, no, I spent a whole day running new wires. From the cab back, I'm like, all right, I got an extra keyed hot. Get it all working. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling like, man, I'm a genius. I got this all figured out. Go out, combine, everything's great. Got the last field done. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to pull the combine down. I got a nice hopper full on the combine. I'm like, I'll go back up, get the wagon. Go back up, get the wagon, pull it underneath. This is a Sunday. Pull it up underneath the auger. Go to hit the key on the combine. Choke it. Nothing. Nothing. Won't pop. And I'm sitting there. It's getting to get 
dark. It was right just that weekend after a time change. So it's 4.35 o'clock. And Getting dark. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. Combine sitting out here, hopper full of corn. <laughs> I can't get Wagon it Wagon sitting there, not running. So once again, only one guy. I can't. I can't can, be in two places at once. Right. And But I can hear that this fuel pump's not running. I'm like, really? Come on. Did I lose a wire or butt connector or whatever? So I get my brother come up, and I go, all right. So I grab voltmeter. I got power to it yet. <laughs> fuel pump died. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm like, oh, you know what? It's still nice out. It's 45 degrees, 50 degrees yet. I'm like, man, this is nice out. I'll run a Noah Riley's, you know. They had it in stock when I bought it. They ought to have another one. Yeah, right. I go in there. Guy looks at me, he goes, and the same guy I got the fuel pump fuel <laughs> pump from two, three weeks earlier. He goes, what you need, boss? I go, I need another one of these. What do you mean? I go, that one don't work. Wow. I go, hook a battery up to it. It don't work. He punches it in. And he goes, All right, I'll be right back. He walks back. I was in here. Nope. Don't have another one. But I can have one here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yes. I go, all right. I go, but it's Monday morning. I got to go to work. Uh, yeah. You'll pick it up after work. Right. So then I go pick up <laughs> pick up the fuel pump. Don't look at it. You know, <sighs> you would think by now working dealership, I'd know to look at a part before I get back and I go, shit. These fittings aren't right. Uh, this is a high pressure pump. I need a low pressure. Turn around, and go back to O'Reilly's. Oh, well, well, we're sorry about that. We will have another one at one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. We've so, all been there and done that. Uh, it Max. was just one of those. It was just one folly after another. Once everything was done, I put the new pump on. Probably worked good. Right. Also had learning curve with trying to find bearings for it. I mean, I had an issue there within the first eight rows of combine, and you know, it's it's a typical, just on a smaller scale. And my shit's old enough that I can't get part to anymore. Where you got where you would want to just go? Oh yeah, we ought to have that. I'm running into that now uh, at the township. Uh, our trucks are old enough now that you know they got bought out in 2007 or eight, mm-hmm. and then that company has gotten bought out since then. So they're like. Hey man, good luck. Mm-hmm. You know that kind of thing, and it's it, it, it's a pain in the ass. It's just a pain in the ass to try to find parts for these things anymore. And oh, well, and that's you're dealing with more modern stuff than what I'm dealing with. Yeah, I think our newest, our newest, our our oldest truck is a '97. Well, and it, my combine is the newest piece of equipment on the farm, other than my skid loader. Nineteen sixty-two, sixty-six on the combine. Damn. And my, sk- my skid loader's in 1984. <laughs> but Hey, if it works. Hey, you know, like I said, smaller scale, whatever. Whatever you can get by with. Yeah. And, that, and that's what it is. I mean, I'm still having fun with it. It's just It's a hobby. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like you're out there trying to make a living off of it. You so, know, it's something fun for you to do to go out, combine some mm-hmm. corn, plant some beans, whatever the case may be, and, and to enjoy that old time equipment right. that you that you that you actually mm-hmm. have a huge passion for. You yeah. Know? And then <laughs> Well, and just to finish up with the harvest thing, everyone else's corn was a little bit wetter and everything. I'm sitting there, I'm 19% moisture. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's a matter of knowing what seed corn usually works out well with my ground and my growing conditions. And you never know what the conditions are going to be. But it's just a matter of knowing what works with your ground. Yeah, if you know if you know your ground, that's, 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 that's a lot of it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, okay, well... Here's a clay hill, but it's really wet over here mm-hmm. compared to it's really dry and clay and on top. So I want to get a variety of corn that's going to work on a clay hill. That's right. going to do the best. Of, that's going to do the best that it can do. But yet in a year like this, that will still do dry well in the low ground where, and that's a lot of my low ground corn was pretty good. I it, bet it, it it did real well, but I was impressed with what was on the hills that I was writing off. Um, then we got to the popcorn. Ooh. That that was a whole nother learning curve. I believe I said that the last time. It's just a learning curve. We're getting it figured out. And we had the same issues there with germination. Just it was either too wet when you were planting it or it was too dry and you couldn't get good seed to soil contact or you got too good a 
seed to soil. <laughs> um, no such thing. No oh, such no. thing as too good seed to soil contact. Yes, there is. Why? If you plant it in the mud. Well, yeah, and but then it you're turns not, dry. But it's it, that's you end up po- with concrete. You're not supposed to plant it in the mud, man. <laughs> Well, you know, see the soil contact is good when it's right. Exactly. I said, but you can have too much (laughs) when, when it cements itself to the seed and won't let it grow. Then you got issues, (laughs) which of course, like I said, learning curve, it ended up, I mean, just the cool part was, is that the same spray that we use for the field corn worked on the popcorn Yeah, because everything was conventional corn. So, I mean, we couldn't use Roundup and everything. Um, we go out and my brother picked almost all of it by himself. I think I helped him finish up like the last 10, 12 rows where, um, last 10, 12 rows, which were maybe 60, 70 foot long. We ended up with maybe a five gallon bucket, maybe two off of those last rows. It just did not yield, didn't come up. And then what we did have were small ears with a lot of, uh, fungus, earworm, just, it just, and then all of a sudden you go another four foot and you'd find an ear like this. It was nice and full and clean. It would just disease everything else. It still ended up, we, I think it was right around three pounds of seed we put in. Okay. And, and I think right now, actually my brother just got done fanning a bunch of it and we ended up with about 250 pounds. Wow. That's of great. Shelled. Um, and it's popping good, probably just not perfect, not, not quite as good as what we would hope, but I mean, it, it's, it's a start. Of, yeah. And now like next year I'll have beans as my main crop. So it'll be a little more forgiving that we are not, cause we did have some, even though we follow guidelines and trying to figure out growth periods and everything else, we did have some cross pollination, cross pollination, but not so much from the field corn. It was actually the two different varieties of popcorn. Yellow and white. Oh, really? Yeah. And it that kind of shocks me a little bit, actually. It, it was kind of interesting. And then we had our little plot of uh, open pollinated stuff right behind the shed. That was our best yielding stuff. It dried nice, nice looking ears and everything. And that's actually what we're probably going to use next year for our seed. There you go. So, and we got more than enough there to cover our seed and then Perfect. still some to enjoy. Yeah. With yeah. a little butter and some salt. And Maybe some bacon grease. Yeah, <laughs> now you're talking stuff that I should be eating more of. <laughs> no, that popcorn thing is just interesting to me because it you don't hear a lot of it around here. Right. I, actually, you don't hear any of it around here except you. You know, right. you and your brother experimenting with there, it. So it's, it's it's interesting for me. There's a lot of the little uh, uh, garden patches. Uh, I guess the touristy type vegetable places that they are growing some of their own popcorn and they're growing it on the same level as what me and my brother are trying to do. Um, <laughs> it's just, they probably got a better fertilizer and chemical program than what, <laughs> what we've got. Well, it sounds like you're starting, you're starting we're, on the chemical program. We're, we're starting <laughs> on it. Um, my, my brother tends to uh, be a little sour on chemicals. I get it. He's, I get it. There's a lot of people that are very into the organic and biodynamic farming. It's very difficult though. It is. It's very it, difficult. Well, it's labor intensive. I mean, you got to be there. I went out, I cultivated everything. A lot of the popcorn, I cultivated at least two to three times trying to keep up with it because it was planted three weeks earlier than my field corn. Yeah. And then some of it, the last batch was planted after my field corn. And that, we didn't, I think I got one little ear like that that we went out and picked in like June, <laughs> July that actually tasted like sweet corn because I'm like, well, it's never going to make it. So I sat there and I, nibbled on it and it did it tastes like a little ear of sweet corn but uh it just you know that never did anything i mean out of well area. depending on when you plant it too we went through a dry period there mm-hmm. for quite some time oh, and that's that's what part of the problem was but it was some of our lower ground that you would have thought it would have caught but still i mean when you plant it in dry soil that's that's the other bad shit right mm-hmm. is if you plant stuff in dry soil and then you don't get any moisture for three mm-hmm. four weeks don't expect much because it all starts from that seed to soil contact in good conditions. And then, <laughs> in and in then, the optimum conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously you want moisture not far along after that mm-hmm. to get that thing to germinate. So if that thing sat in the ground for 
two, three weeks, and, and there wasn't and, sub, and, and there wasn't enough moisture there to germinate that seed the right way. It's already doomed to fail. And Not that it's your fault. No. It's just Mother Nature. Yeah. But ah, you don't need the, you don't need that later <laughs> popcorn. You're gonna have plenty of the earlier stuff. Well, and that we planted a yellow and a white variety. Um, the uh, yellow was by far with our soil, and that's the thing. We're still trying to find what variety is going to work best with our soil conditions. Absolutely. And that changes year to year, just as you know. One variety may do phenomenal, bonkers one year, and the next year it's. Ah, yeah, or it might be, yeah. but it just, and that's the fun part is, you know, you're always sitting there. You want to try some new things. And that's one thing I've learned from you is you, you with your farming background, you always were trying some little thing here or there to help out. Yeah. It didn't have to be major. No. You know, it didn't, it didn't have to be anything major as far as, you know, trying a new chemical program or a new fertilizer program. It was, Hey, we planted this at thirty-two thousand seeds mm-hmm. per acre. Let's cut it back to thirty-one. See what right. happens. Or on the other side of that, you know, we've been planting beans, no-till beans at two hundred and ten thousand. Well, we're planting these in thirty-inch rows. Let's cut it back to one hundred and forty and see what happens. Well, and that's simple things. That's last year. Me and Dad for years have drilled beans, and then Roundup Ready beans go through and spray over top Roundup when needed and last year i'm like no nope, i'm, I'm gonna cultivate them i went through and planted them on 38 inch rows did my math figured it out still about 60 pounds of the acre which is old school math that's that's it's a little old school because it all depends that's like know. a quarter to a third of what the guys are putting in now yeah because you know seed size also matters too right so <laughs> you can have 60 pounds but you might have you know 20 2200 seeds per 60 pounds or mm-hmm. whatever that math ends up to be. And compared to it could be a 50 pound bag and you might have 68 right. or 28, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it, it's a little flawed, but right. overall it's, it's, but it's that, a good, good, good that, guy. That was always where my dad said, Oh, you set to drill for 60 pounds the acre for beans. Okay. Well, I did the math, figured out what I needed to set the planter at, set everything up. And of course there's gearbox that changes and different plates and all that. And I had, beautiful looking stand of beans but weeds got out ahead of me and now i didn't plant or no i did plant roundup ready beans but i can't be around roundup i bust out in hives oh like it you're allergic to that stuff, oh huh? not, not, <laughs> i'm not super allergic it's just i've i've had a bad experience once or gotcha. twice so usually my dad did the spraying so i went out and i cultivated cultivated and they were nice and clean looking they were eh, about knee high and then we got that big gully washer of rain and um, made some new made some new trails through the field. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. When you got washouts in between thirty eight inch rows of beans that are <laughs> anywhere from eight to twelve, sixteen inches deep, it makes for an interesting harvest. It does with old equipment. Shit, with any equipment, it's going to make it interesting. So, but beans did well that year, and. Didn't get any kind of tillage done that fall. So the spring also added to our difficulty with germination with the corn. But uh, I'll let you know, this year I got everything fall plowed. Perfect. All got rolled over. It's beautiful. It's it's dark side up. So Oh, that'll be great to work with in the springtime. We're, we're looking forward to uh, maybe a new beginning next spring with all this it'll, stuff. It'll, it'll so. be good for you. You'll be amazed. And once that sun starts coming out and how quick that oh, ground will warm yeah. up and, and, and how fast it'll dry mm-hmm. out. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good things to, for that to happen. Yeah. Anytime we were able to do that in the past, it's always that next year has been a, a good lot year. better year. Yeah. And of course, that'll be the first time that that's been mold boarded in I think probably five, six years. So, I mean, that's going to make another big, big difference other than I probably just brought up a whole new generation of ragweed seed <laughs> that I buried six, seven years ago. Cause I know that stuff is stays Rag dormant. Weed is going to grow no matter what, my friend. <laughs> it well, doesn't it, matter. N- now that we got a little bit of a chemical program going, no, I'm not quite as worried about I, it. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, if you can get, if you can get your neighbor to come in there and, and, you know, spray, spray the little mm-hmm. acres that you got, you know, just to keep the weeds down to help, to help you, well, not only to help you, but to help that plant. That's going to be huge. And, and that's the fun part is being on the scale I am, you know, a lot of these big guys, 
they they can't even come in and unfold their boom to do a field. <laughs> <laughs> they'd come in and make one pass, and they don't even have the ends out on a hundred foot boom in some of my spots. So, like I said, it worked out perfect the way it sounds. Right. And and you know, if you get 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 back on that program again next year, get it in there early enough too. Well, and you that's, know, that's we were me and him were kind of discussing maybe doing like a pre emergent program especially now that i've got that i was just gonna bring that up <laughs> and see this is all new stuff to me I, I i farm like it's 1950 60 something so i'm not up on all this yeah. modern chemical mm-hmm. warfare stuff mm-hmm. that we use <laughs> no and that's the thing uh, you know if you go in there with a pre-emergent with, with a pre mm-hmm. and put it down before you before you plant mm-hmm. or before your seed comes up out of the ground right that's going to keep it clean probably for a good three weeks. Mm-hmm. And then if you decide, oh, man, they're coming, you know what, I think I'm already ahead of this. I might be able to cultivate this and stay ahead of it at that point. You might be able to do that way well, too. Well, now knowing what I know, I'm not going to plant my beans again. 38-inch <laughs> rows, I'm going to drill them. Yeah, I would too. And, and it's just anymore just getting that uh, canopy going. And like you said, you know, you get that pre-emergent on there. You get the pre on there, and those beans come up three, four weeks. And at that point, Drilled beans and You're close. seven inch, they're gonna already be shading pretty good at that point. Yep. It may just be a quick pass with some roundup later in the season to maybe clean, burn down whatever comes. Maybe and you know what, I'd just be happy with being able to go out there and actually see my beans when I'm combining them. <laughs> I'm sure your combine would appreciate that too a little bit. <laughs> the old combine, she it, it'll eat them ragweeds though. You know, 1957 technology, it will take it'll them. Eat it them will ragweeds. It, it will take them ragweeds and stalks about that big around. It'll spit them right out the back. And, and actually keep a lot of them out of the grain tank. I That's the it. amazing thing too. You know, them old combines, they there's nothing wrong with them. Mm-mm. I mean, they, they they really do a good job for the technology that was there at the time. Well, and the technology hasn't changed other than now we got sensors and everything else that are picking up. And a lot stuff. bigger. A well, lot bigger scale. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I, I will I will give you that much. But when you think about it, that 30 combine that I'm running, it's a seven-foot header. The uh, grass bars are six foot long. So they're not much smaller than what they are in a 9600. No, let me rephrase that. Maybe not necessarily uh, but bigger, but the would, capacity it, it will is not a take the capacity. hell of a lot more. Yeah, and, and then, of course, back then they had what they called a scour clean attachment on it made by Hart. that is actually a drum, so it's almost like a seed cleaner like you'd use in, mm-hmm. a, in the seed companies yeah. for grading, and, but you put different size screens in there. Well, with this, with the soybeans, you can get it set up to where those ragweed seeds fall through the screen, but the beans keep going through. Which is what it's supposed to do. Right. But the fun part is you can put a 50-pound bag back there to catch all your weed seeds. If you're not paying attention, after about two rounds, you fill a 50-pound <laughs> bag of ragweed <laughs> seeds and the, and the foxtail and whatever else. You Sounds to me from. like you got to take one of them wagons and hook it behind well, you. Well, know, if I can figure out there. a way to have that and have a second wagon drug behind or a lawn <laughs> cart or whatever, at least get me a few more rounds. A well, lawn cart might work. Well, the fun part was, of course, then they get full and you start <laughs> dropping all of it in a pattern <laughs> across the field. And that's usually why we wanted to mold board even after soybeans. Was yeah. so that we buried all that stuff. The amazing thing is you go through and you take those bags of that ragweed seed and there'll be the broken beans and that. You go and dump that in a fence row or somewhere just to get rid of the stuff. Usually I like throwing it on a fire pit and burn the stuff, but I went through and dumped some just in a fence row and that. And I'm like, the next spring I go walking by, I go, that's right where the grass, everything will be six, eight inches taller and darker green than it is. Right no next kidding. To it. All the nitrogen or whatever, that, all that ragweed soaked up and robbed your crop of. You go and dump the seed and it rots there with everything else, and you got nitrogen. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, how can hmm. I harness this? <laughs> I'll just spread it back out in the field. Oh, yeah. wait, don't well, do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then that's just like the couple of years ago they come through and they – Failed all my stocks after I combined corn. Well, he used it for bedding for his cattle. Well, then he, in turn, would give me back my manure. <laughs> which in return. <laughs> which in return, I got all the ragweed seeds back that he round back. 
<laughs> so oh, you, know, it, it's, you are just losing on this, Max. It, 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 hey, like I said, <laughs> if ragweed was a cash crop, I'd be the. You'd be the king. I'd be the king. You'd be the no. I've I've, no, I've seen some good ragweed mm, around the area. Well, not like mine. Probably not like <laughs> yours, but if you let it go, I bet it would be. No, that's that's. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that your harvest went it, better than expected. Yeah, yeah, it overall. was better than expected, and I mean, it was just one of those things that just frustrating, you know. Sometimes, and especially, I'm still in that transition period of not having my dad around. And learning a lot of the stuff that he was doing that I didn't pay attention to. Yeah, because he just handled it and you yeah, did your he, end of it. He and... handled it. And I I kept machinery going. And I, I, I wouldn't say I was calling the shots in the operation, but Dad kind of let me have the reins and he'd just kind of sit back, but he did all the little details. All the little piddly shit. Yeah. That all of a sudden, when you don't have that guy around anymore, it's like, oh crap, I gotta do that yeah. now. <laughs> Why isn't this done? Oh shit, now I gotta do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I'm trying to bring my son up to where he can actually see what all's got to go into it. And Stuart will be 11 here in February, and <sighs> time it, flies. <laughs> it just, uh, and he's into it. And he's not like I was, but he's 11 years old too. Yeah, oh, give him, give him time. Yeah. Him I mean, time. he's into the tractors and that a little bit. Big thing is model railroading. That's his big thing. That People sit there and listen to me talk about trains or talk about tractors and antique tractors and that, and I see a lot of people, all of a sudden, their eyes will just kind of roll. Like, oh, God, he's talking about tractors again. Again? That That's my son with trains. trains. And I'll sit there and all of a sudden go, I'll get, I'll actually glaze over. <laughs> and then, you know, all of a sudden at one point I go, you know, I go, I've created this monster. I've encouraged him to get into something. And this is what he loves. Yep. So I looked at him and I go, you know what, Stuart, tell me more about that. Teach me. Cause I want to learn about the trains. Well, that way you can, have something in common moving right. on to the future. Right. And it's not just what your want is. It's also what his want is. Right. And it, it's one of those things that you, you learn as you get older, as you're sitting there going, you know what? You got to encourage him and keep him going in that direction. Well, and I, I think that's, that's not just a father and son thing though. No. Right. No. I mean, I have a thirst for knowledge today more than I've ever had in my entire life. I hated school. I hated re- sitting down, reading books, doing homework, hated all that shit. Mm-hmm. Since I've started this podcast, I have learned so damn much, oh. and I'm not bored doing it. Mm-hmm. I hope my listeners are the same way. I hope they sit down and they learn something with every conversation that I have here, that we have here at this desk, because knowledge is power. I'm well, a firm believer in that. And that's one thing that I'll I'll tell you, and this has opened my eyes, and just like me telling my son, you know, what? explain that more to me. This is something that the whole world needs right now is that, you know what? Don't, don't be so concerned with yourself and what you want to do. Stop and listen to your neighbor. Listen to what someone else has got. To listen say. to the other views, but, but the other l- thoughts, listen and keep an open mind on it mm-hmm. because you're going to learn something. You're going to glean any little detail out of what that other person's got to say. It that, might click something in your brain, right? It might be like, you know, I never looked at it that point of view. I've never thought about it that way. One of the biggest issues to me, socially right now, is that everyone is in their own little bubble. And they only want people that think like they do in their bubble. We can't handle confrontation or having a little bit of an argument with someone. And all of a sudden, that person's just the biggest asshole on the face of the earth. I don't want to deal with them again. That's what makes made the world go round years ago was the fact that it still guys does. could butt heads and still be buddies. Oh yeah. I we, mean, we can have different views on stuff, but that doesn't mean we can't sit down and enjoy a beverage with each other Well, it, because it, we it, enjoy each other's company. It, that's what you made know? life fun was someone having a different view and you give people shit about their oh, views absolutely. back and, and I mean, just an open <laughs> channel of communication between two people. You know, it, it's no different than if if somebody likes John Deere and somebody likes International, mm-hmm. right? It, it's, this, it's you guys, you have the same love, 
So they're different brands. Well, some brands, some things International did was genius. Mm -hmm. Some things John Deere did was genius. Some of some of them both did stupid fun well, things. Well, you know, <laughs> so to to sit there and, and yeah, oh, you know, eight hundred six is better than a forty twenty, and it's like, well, maybe in your opinion. I mean, mm -hmm. I like a forty twenty because of this, but I also like an eight hundred six because of this. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. It's the same right. conversation. Right, but it's just people. Anymore. Close-minded. Yep, very close-minded. Well, um, we both have dealt with certain people in our careers that are that way, that don't want to see it from someone else's perspective. Because, you know, one guy over here can say, well, the sky's blue. This other person can say, no, the sky's red. Well, you Maybe try. one of them's colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> and that could be that very well be. But the thing is, this guy over here and this guy over here won't talk to each other because this one believes something different. Because the sky is blue instead of red. Right. We don't need that. <laughs> no, no. And, and I think it's getting worse. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, it just, I really think it's getting worse now. You know I mean? I, I know, I, I know I've, I've, I've got people that I talk to and we don't see eye to eye in a lot of things, but we, we do see eye to eye in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's why we hang out. That's why we talk. That's why we see each other, you know, because we do see certain things that are eye to eye. Well, and every person needs that challenge. Someone's going to challenge them just that little bit or whatever. And it makes each other better. Oh, I agree. I mean, me learning a little bit from you makes me a better person where you learn something from me and makes you a little bit better. On, on certain aspects of and, it. Absolutely. And that's, that's, how this country was built. And that's the way it needs to keep going, uh -huh. right? Is, is to keep learning from each other is right. to keep picking up those things that you wouldn't normally think about, or you wouldn't normally put that perspective in there. But when you do that, it makes you just a little bit more open-minded in some things like, Hmm, that's a good idea. Or, right. or parts of your idea is a good idea. Well, and that's, you know, I've had so many different guys I've worked with over the years that <laughs> I've had, I've still get, as many years as I've worked at dealership. Now, now this brings us back to where we started the whole <laughs> conversation. You know, you work somewhere so long, you get set in your ways. And absolutely, you got certain ways that you do things that all of a sudden you see the new guy come in and do the same thing you're doing, but he does something just a little bit different. Wait, how'd you do that? Why'd you do it that way? Yeah, why'd you do it that way? But it's being open minded enough to go over and ask him and not going over and go, Why'd you do that that way? This is the way we do it here. Exactly. I've always said, you know, to get to the finish line, there's a ton of different paths, oh, right? There is so much stuff that I've learned shortcuts from other guys in the business that I'm sitting there going, you know, I wouldn't be in this job yet if I was still doing it the way I did my, 20 my, years ago. My favorite, when, when something like that happens to me, I sit there and go, Kyle, you're an idiot. Why didn't you think of that? Right. You oh. know? <laughs> I mean, it could be something just Seriously. as simple it, as doing this or that. And then you're like, oh, I'm an, you know, mm -hmm. if I would have done that five years ago, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, it, well, and that's the thing is I'm finally getting to that point where all of a sudden I go, you know, you dumbass. You, can, you, you couldn't figure that out <laughs> before. And I sit there and go, you know, it was, the answer was right there the whole time. I just didn't see it, and it'll just piss you off. It does. And, you know, like I was going to say earlier, is, is there's there's 50 ways to the finish line, right? Oh. Obviously, you have the complete wrong direction. Mm -hmm. You have the complete right direction, but there's 48 other paths that are in between that. You well. just got to figure out what's what's efficient for you, what's right for you, the easiest way for you to understand, and mm -hmm. go. Well, and the fun part is when you got certain people that are going to – guide you on that <laughs> and they send you completely down the wrong path and then you sit there and you look back and go why did i even listen to what they had to say but, oh i get it but that goes back to the whole thing you listen to each other you talk you glean the information you want from it but you don't need to be angry or sarcastic or get pissed off at that person because they don't think the way you do the only the only thing that i'll that i'll be the devil's advocate on that just a little bit is if I've done something enough and, and, and I, and I, and I, this you, is the you way know to that do you it. Got it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to tell you to not go off and try it your way, mm -hmm. but if your way doesn't work, come back and see me because I've done this 472,000 mm -hmm. times. 
this is the way, this is the way that I figured it out to be the fastest, most efficient, cost effective way to do this. Trust me on this. Oh, and I've I've done a lot of that over the years. You know, with guys I've worked no, with, you haven't. No, <laughs> I, I try and share what knowledge I do have on how to do certain jobs, but it also is a two way street. I've I've worked with guys that I sit there and go, why'd you do it that way? But then all of a sudden I go, wait a minute, I see something I can take there and I can use that to better how I do it. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing is, is just as you get older, you start losing certain physical abilities. (laughs) um, You you start figuring out your hands don't quite bend or twist the way they should. Yeah, you know, I've gotten that bolt 400 times before. And uh-huh. right now that thing is just uh, not, yeah. not the, letting me get it. The, these two fingers right here can't quite get turned and <laughs> in there. Or, and, uh, well, or just physically reaching or stretching or trying to, I'll tell you right we'll now. We'll start some yoga, Max. Well, that's, I'm, I'm thinking about trying to do that. Oh yeah, you I, should. I, I, the only thing is, man, you know how funny I'd look. Who cares about how you look? It's about how you feel. Well, that's true. And I will say, there's there's some things that have been uh, changing a little bit that I'm like, you know what, I, I need to start fixing some of this stuff or I'm really going to be crippled here in yeah, another few know, years. The last time that we talked, um, last time you were here, and I just started looking at myself and I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, you got to do better, <laughs> you know? So I've, 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 done, I've gone down some of that path as well where you got you to gotta look yourself in the mirror and go, I, I need to be better. This podcast episode is sponsored by Dan's Diesel Performance. If you're looking to improve your truck's performance, efficiency, or appearance, check out Dan's Diesel Performance. They manufacture turbochargers, fuel injectors, fuel pumps, transmissions, intake piping, and much, much more. Plus, they offer all the top brands in the diesel industry. They're located in McChesney Park, Illinois. Visit their website at dansdieselperformance.com or give them a call at 815-977-5865. It's been a long time. Yeah, you know, I mean, as far as, like, the beer goes, I mean, you know, kind of since I started on my journey, I've cut way, way back on the beer. Right, I don't get me wrong. I, I still enjoy it, you know, when I have a podcast or something. <laughs> and somebody be like, hey, you know, I like to drink Bush Light. And I'm like, oh. All right, I guess I'll have a couple bush lattes, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that that's not near as calorie loaded. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's still Yeah, it's, it's still not. It's still got enough in it, you know, but at the end of the day, you still got to enjoy the little things a little bit too, right. you know. Well, and that's my big thing is, you know, I've always been taught it's beer, tractors, women. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, the women will come around. It's just I, I've always been you, you're working on a tractor. If you're at work, you don't drink. But once you're off work, it's playtime. Yep. It's you go down to the sure shop. Time. Yeah. Now, if I've got stuff I'm going on in the shop, I'm working on or whatever, I lay off it. But then all of a sudden, once you're done for the day, it's just one after another. Yeah, after it, another. It, it's and just funny how like when you know you're like, man, I got to get a lot of stuff done. So mm-hmm. you know, back back when I drank beer or drank more beer than I do now. Uh, yeah, you'd crack one. That son of a bitch might be open two hours, three hours. And you get to it, and you're like, oh, it's piss warm. <laughs> and then sometimes you're like, yeah, I'm going to go tinker with this. And then you have three beers in 45 right. minutes. <laughs> well, and see, see, with me, it's more of that than it is the uh, beer getting warm and or figuring out where you left it. That's the other fun part now as you get older. <laughs> It's like, oh, I was working on that engine on that combine. I really got to crawl back up there to get my beer. <laughs> we got another one here. <laughs> we'll let it sit and breathe a little bit before we open it the rest of the way. Maybe it was just too cold. No, I don't think it was that. It's, it, it, it's been a complaint lately. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard about it. Like I said, my boss is a big paps man. I'll have to ask him tomorrow <laughs> when I see him and see if there's any truth to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, But there's been a couple of times where I've, yeah, that's that's why, like, when I did, I just shit-canned everything. And then, you know, that went mm-hmm. about two years and then had a real bad day. And Well, and it's – I'm trying to remember. I I must have had some floating around. I think I gave it to one of the guys up at work. I, oh, I think I gave it to Roger. I said, here, just take it. I'm done with it. And he's like, huh? What's wrong with it? I go, there's nothing wrong with it. They're sealed cans. I go, I wouldn't give I it to one I laced it in cocaine. 
<laughs> you, let's just say don't plan on sleeping for a few days. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a funny joke, but it wouldn't be a funny joke. <laughs> Especially if they popped a random on him. Oh, God. <laughs> How do you explain that? I get. It seems like since I've got my CDL, we get randoms all the freaking time. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my guy at work, he's been hit twice. I've been hit once. Really? Six months. Five months. And four months. Five months. I'm going to sit here and knock on the table quick, but 28 years there, I've never been popped for a drug test. Well, you know, CDL, it's a little bit different. You know, you're in the federal database. I don't even remember. Really, since the last takeover, I don't. That I've seen. You know, Back when it was Bucks and that was Harvard Implant before that. Yeah, that kind of like, see, hey, you, next you, Wednesday. Well, <laughs> you'd at least, you at least heard about it, you know. All of a sudden, it seems like the last couple of years, everything's everything that's going on with someone else is kind of secretive. So. Beats me. Nah, it beats me. My boss is always just like, hey, you got a random two days from now, so. If you're going to do your mushrooms, get them done tonight. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because they'll be out of my system in two freaking Whatever days. you're planning on doing, get it done quick or stop <laughs> doing it right now. Um, I mean, we joke around mm-hmm. like that. Obviously, none of us are doing that. But. but but that's always the fun part. That, once again, goes back to people getting along. And you know when you found your group or your people that you can get along with and actually. Yeah. Shoot the shit we have to make fun of. Harass and, or yeah. poke fun at. And, Same thing, you know, and then they make fun of me about doing something stupid well, too. And it's like, well, yeah. I mean. you, you know, it's just like, you know, certain times when you're at, at the workplace, you got certain guys that you just know that you can you can push whatever buttons you want and they're going to push your buttons, but it's all in fun. It's you all just in fun. It's and, to get through the damn day. Oh, yeah. I, we, got, we got certain guys that every day it's the, the greetings. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Morning. There's a specific guy that drives around the country, and he loves those. <laughs> and uh, we we just that's that's our we say hi that way. Flip each other the bird. Yep. If you really want to give him one, you give him the double bird. But <laughs> you know, it just but and that's you know which guys you can do that with. Yeah. And especially course, after a little while when you're working. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, theoretically, you're together. 55, 60 hours a week. You're, you're around the people you work with. You're around them more than you are your family. Yeah, because, really, when you because look at it. seven or eight hours when you're with your family, you're sleeping. Uh-huh. So that doesn't really count, in my opinion. Right. So the people you work with, you're there more than you're not. So you might as well try to figure out a way to get along yeah, and have the, fun. The, the, the fun part is, is that, you know, sometimes you can have more. You got those good buddies that you can just hang out with even after hours, have a couple beers, horse around with or whatever, or – Hey, I need a hand. Need an extra, extra pair of hands. Give me a hand lifting this or uh, doing this or that. Wrenching on that. Mm-hmm. And those are the guys that. Okay, what brand of beer do I got to have for you? And you make sure you got their beer. You sit. You get the project done. You have a couple beers and just hang out. That's right. Yeah, that and, that, and that's the that's the fun part of the, about working with people that that you enjoy working mm-hmm. with. Because you you don't you, you have that friendship, but you also have that friendship outside of work too. Right. And and that's just the fun part about it all. You know, well, Max, thanks for coming over and and uh, shooting shit and talking a little farming and everything else well, that we, well, yeah, we, we s- hit subjects on today. I, I think uh, pretty much we covered the dartboard and most of the wall. Yeah, there's probably <laughs> some was, holes in the wall. It was pretty pretty enough. sporadic. <laughs> ah, you never know where these are going to go. That's why I don't have an itinerary set out. You no, know, it, we, it's, we sometimes all, we get on a fun subject and we stay on that subject for a while. And, uh, and well, I'll keep coming over as long as someone still thinks I'm interesting. So. Ah, I still think you're interesting. <laughs> so, well, and of course, you know, now it's just a matter we got to talk about what I screwed up or what I'm doing this year for the farm. So, yeah, yeah, there's a, there's always something to talk ma- about. Maybe there. one of these times I'll be uh, pushing the uh, Wilson Brothers popcorn. There you go. <laughs> that would be cool. We can uh, we can do the first ever. Wilson Brothers popcorn commercial. That's right. Right here. <laughs> I'm hanging out with K-Dubs. Yeah, you know, and the, the, my Spotify debut the last two times have been YouTube, so. Yeah, that's right. That's we, 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 We've got on Spotify since then, so mm-hmm. this will be fun. Yeah, be interesting to see. A little bit, probably a little bit bigger audience now, I would think. I don't look at that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> don't care, right? I don't. I, I, You're I, just having fun. I do this because it's fun. It's entertaining. Uh, it, it's... 
I learn something new all the time that I do this stuff. And, and, And to me, that's what I care about. Well, and that's one thing that I was gonna say is, you know, this is my third time being on, but listening to every one of the podcasts that I've listened to, which like I said, I admit it, I've fallen a little bit behind here lately, but I have met so many more people that are from this area that I have a lot in common with or oh shit, I didn't know that. Some of the different walks of life different people in different professions. And that's why I like to do that is and, bring different walks of life on here because that, that opens up the variety to everybody. Well, and guys that I've known for years, or at least I recognize them, they'll come on here and start talking. I'm like, you know, how come I've not met that guy yet? Because we we're kind of in that same circle. We do kind of the same things, but what you're doing, I absolutely love. Thank and you. That's why I enjoy anytime you call me and you say, Hey, you had time come over this week. I'll be there for you. Perfect. I appreciate that. Thanks for listening, too. And uh, until next time, because I'm sure there will be one. Well, maybe. We'll see. Hi, Max.